Hi there everyone on YouTube, this is Jeff from JeffMobile.com and today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to edit a 360 degree video filmed with the Samsung Gear 360 camera. So basically what you do is, if you plug your 360 camera into your Windows computer, it will show up under th this PC. It doesn't show right now because it's not plugged in, but when it is plugged in, it will show up as Gear 360 here. You can open up the camera and drag the files or copy them into your videos folder. So I've created a folder called test and this is the file that came from the camera. It says 360 and there's some number. And if you open up this file in say VLC player, which is one of the players that works, uh, you'll see that it actually shows as two different fisheye lenses. So. Just a second to load. So there we go. Right, so Vancouver. it's this is Jeff from having, Jeff some, Mobile having some trouble playing, but market. Um, you just briefly saw there that that's the, the the video from the camera. So in order to first of all begin editing this video, you need to convert it into the what's called equirectangular projection. In order to do that, we need to use the Gear 360 software. So this is the software. When you got your Gear 360 camera, there was a little piece of paper with a license key on there. You need to keep that license key and install this th software called the Gear 360 Action Director, which is available from Samsung. Open the software up. Once you enter your license key, it lets you access it. If you don't have your license key, then you may be able to get another one from contacting Samsung. Uh, but go into this mode called 360 Video. And before you start editing, it's important to set up a few settings. So I'll go into this gear icon here and then I'll go through the menus one, one by one. So under general, you can leave that by default. Editing tab. Now, if you're doing any video where you were, you're hand holding the camera, such as you're holding on a selfie stick or held in your hand, you wanna make sure that this is checked, that it's gonna do the automatic angle compensation. So that helps stabilize the video in the 360 camera for gear 360. So I like to have that checked. If you're using a tripod shot though, it's better to turn that off. So that's one important setting. Under file, you should set these import folder and export folders to something that you know, because by default it's hard to find the file. So I've set it to my videos folder in a special place called Action Director Export. This is where it will place the stitch together 360 files. Under hardware acceleration, you definitely do want to check enable OpenCL technology to speed up, speed up the rendering and also enable enable hardware decoding. If you have a fancy video card, it will really speed up the process. And then finally, under um, file, you maybe or under project, uncheck these things uh, automatically load sample clips because that will slow down your computer if you have those checked. And under produce, I always check these first two options here, they're reduce, reducing the blocky artifacts and reducing noise. So once that's all set up, now it's time to drag in the video. So I'm gonna drag in this video into the file here. Importing media and it will load up here and then it will start processing the video. It's still loading. I have a really slow video card right now, but I'm, I actually have a new one coming in the mail, so hopefully it'll be faster. So you can see that the video is here. It is a 360 video, you can drag it around. There's me in front of the market, and that's great. And you can, if you hover your mouse over top of the title here, it says shadow file generating. Well, it will also say 360 file generating, and there will be a progress bar that goes across. But I've already posted this one, so there's no progress bar in this case. But in, what you'll get is you'll get a progress bar going across, when it says 100% and finishes, then you'll have your your 360 file processed. So in order to find that file, you got to right click, open file location, and it opens up the explorer to where the 360 file went. You notice this is the export directory that you set previously. So this is the stitched file. Now, as you notice, the file I dropped in was the one that didn't say stitch. So the stitched one, that's the one you want to edit in Premiere. So you can actually close this Gear 360 software now because I'm not going to use it for editing. It's very, very rudimentary and I don't recommend it for actually editing the video. However, you do need to use it for, for processing your 360 file. So close that now and I don't need to save. And here's the file that you want to edit. So I just control X or cut, cut that file 
and I'm going to go move it into a place like another folder where I'll test the editing. So that's the original footage. I'll paste in the 360 file there. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new project in Premiere. I'm using an older version of Premiere, but a newer one will be fine too. New, and then I'll go to the directory test and create a project called test for test. Okay, click OK. And I've already set up a custom profile here, but you can have a look at how I did it. So editing mode DSLR time base 29.97, video settings, uh, frame size is, is 4K resolution 3840 by 1920, 29.97 pixel access, access ratio and sample rate 48. So I've set up a, pre a preset for that already. If you want to edit your own preset, you can go to settings, change all these options to the ones I've set here and click save preset so that way you can use it for the next time. Okay, so there we go. So gear 360, I will enter the name of the sequence, just test, click OK. And it's going to load the Premiere workspace. Now I want to drop in the video file. I don't want to drop in the unstitched version, which is this, the plain 70. That's the one for coming from the camera. Instead, I want to drop in the stitched version, which comes from the, which is generated by the Action Director 360 software. Drop that onto the workspace. Okay, double click it, and you'll notice that it looks like this. It's called Equirectangular Projection, and it's going to be whatever is in the center of the video, that will be the default view when the person starts playing the video on YouTube or Facebook. Things on the side will be wrapping around. So you can kind of imagine if you play this in this way, what it will look like in 360 because the center will be the center and this will wrap all, all the way around you. So it's just a matter of editing this video however you want, just as if you would normally edit a video in Premiere. I'll say drop this onto here. I might, uh, you know, cut it, zoom in a bit and make a cut there, delete this part, put a fade out, and so that's pretty much basic editing. However, there's a really neat trick I want to show you. If you wanted to uh, change what's going to be in the center, you say, I'd rather have this taxi be in the center of the screen right now. Go to the effects panel and search for offset. I'm going to call it offset under distort. Drag that onto your video. Now go into your effects controls and now you can use the horizontal setting, which is the first one, to actually change what's going to be in the center of your video. That really helps if you're doing editing. So of 360 videos, you can't use the vertical one because that will totally mess up. It doesn't work. See, it doesn't work properly, but the horizontal one will work. So horizontal is great. So I've now readjusted my video. Basically what you do now, just export your video as if you normally do. So I'll just go file, export media. And this is where I set it up for 4K. So make sure that you're using H.264 um, format and set your frame width and frame height to those uh, 3840, 1920, frame rate 29.97. Uh, you want to choose level 5.1 to allow you to export the high resolution video, profile high, square pixels. For better quality, I always check render maximum depth, bit rate, encoding one pass. Uh, for minimum for HD, you should be using 50 megabits per second, which is give you the full quality. And I set the max at 300. I also check use maximum render quality. Under audio tab, I set up uh, AAC 48 kilohertz and under the bit rate, I put it at the max, which is 320. And that's pretty much it. So now I just click, um, make sure this is okay. And I click Q, goes to the media encoder and wait till that loads. Click the plus button to start the queue. If you have a pretty fast computer, this shouldn't take very long. Just renders out the video. If you put color correction and other effects, it might take a bit longer. As you can see, the time is really going down really fast. Um, so once that is finished, which should be just a few minutes, you'll see that the final video gets rendered out. But in order to speed this along, I have already rendered out this video previously, so we'll stop that right now. And 
that makes the sound. And let's say that the video that I had exported was, say, this one here, 360 potato salad video. Um, this is the one that, say, rendered out previously. If I play it, you'll see that it renders in this fashion right, like Vancouver. this. This is Jeff from Jeff Mobile Dog. Um, but this will not go to 360 if you upload to YouTube. So you have to use what's called the 360 uh, Spatial Metadata Injector software, which I'll put a link to this below. This is a little tool that you have to run on your file to process it before you can upload to YouTube. So this little tool here, click open and choose the video file that you want. So I will choose the one that was exported second here okay so it's just sorting the directory right now I have so many video files in this folder <laughs> there it is so it's this one here it see it says spherical it's not checked you want to make sure it's checked and then click save as and I'll just call it something o2 injected so once it's finished saving, it will create this file here. I've already got one here that I've already saved before, injected. This is the one that you want to upload to YouTube, the one that says injected. So I go to my YouTube channel and upload that file, and then it will appear as a 360 video on Facebook and YouTube. So that's the little tutorial. I hope this was helpful and give you a head start on editing your videos with Adobe Premiere and using the Samsung Gear 360 camera. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Hope you have a great day and bye-bye uh, for now.